So, we've got a small little pole mount here. You can see another type of top of pole mount racking there where we've sort of sandwiched the pole together in play that we plug together. It's got a positive lead, a negative lead, and you really can't mix them up because they're, they're different, right? And so, basically what they've done is they've wired all three of these modules together in series. Okay, so we've wired three modules together in series for one series string, and then we can see we've got a negative home run and a positive home run coming off and a ground, right? Okay. Now, let's look at the grounding on these modules real quick. Okay. okay. They've done equipment grounding because the modules have metal frames, right? So anything with a metal box, enclosure frame, whatever, we have to do equipment grounding on. Technically, this grounding that we see here with the a small little U-shaped jumper between yeah. one module frame and the other, and then the other one's kind of hidden behind the pole here. Yeah. That works electrically, okay, but technically the NEC will not allow us to do that. Because we want one continuous <laughs> ground equipment ground run there, so that if we ever have to say some punk kid comes by and chucks a rock at one of these modules and it damages it, and we have to pull it out to service it, right? to replace it. Okay, so if, we, if we pull out that middle one, as it's grounded right now, we've broken all the equipment grounding, right? Yeah, the top one and the bottom one are no longer grounded together and, and the home run is only coming off the top one. And so now we don't have a continuous grounding run in our box. You're using the frames, right. okay? But instead of just jumpering from one to the other, you're using one continuous wire to go from the top one to the, to the middle one to the bottom one and then in through this conduit all the way to our combiner box, which is in here. So that's why you have that. So we're not breaking it at all. That way, if I have to pull out the middle module, okay, I just undo the grounding bolt or screw to that middle module, and I pull that module out, the other two are still connected by one continuous ground wire coming all the way back to the, to the combiner here. And I have a continuous equipment ground no matter what piece of equipment I service up there. That's very important. Other so you things. You just expose the green wire and or you put a clamp on, on it. Sheet. Sheet you, can, you can use bare. Typically, you'll use bare right. because over time, this is going to become very ugly. Okay, this is going to start shedding its insulation because it's not meant to be outdoors. That that quick connect wire that we see there, that black wire, yeah. that's that's USE-2 wire. That's an insulation rating on the wire. And it's rated to be outdoors, exposed to the elements. We don't want to put it in direct sunlight, but it's, it's, it's rated to be exposed outdoors. Is that oftentimes we would like to see the rack also have a ground on it hit the rack in one spot and make sure we pull an equipment ground on it and also the pole, okay, because it's another metal piece of equipment in this system and oftentimes they'll consider it another structure or whatnot and we might have to drive a ground rod which I believe they've got yeah. out here as well. So we may want to also ground our rack in one spot and our pole. When we're grounding the rack and the pole, we can't just drill a hole in there and then put a through bolt and tighten it up. Okay, because that's a mechanical connection. And then and electrically, we want to see electrical connections. So what we want to do is we want to actually drill a hole, tap it, okay, with a fine thread, like a 10 30 seconds. That's probably the most common what we would use. And we're going to tap that to a fine thread so that we get at least two threads of engagement. So we have a lot of surface contact there and we have a very good ground over time. Okay, so we would drill and tap the rack, drill and tap the pole, and, and we would ground them that way. And we would do that all with one continuous ground wire all the way into the combiner box here. So one continuous equipment ground. It's the same um, grounding lug for the frame and also for the pole as well. Okay, this is, this is an important little thing because we want to minimize a corrosion effect with dissimilar materials there. Okay, putting the putting the copper wire directly against the aluminum frame, we have a, a big discrepancy in materials there and we'll get a corrosion cell. And when we get corrosion there, then we don't have a good grounding point, right? We won't, we won't get good continuity between those two materials and we won't have a good ground. So that's why we want to use something like this. Rings, say three or four, then we're going to need series fusing protection. And we would put that right in this combiner box. 
So each series string, the positive conductor from each series string would run through um, a fuse in this combiner box. So we'd fuse every series string and then we could parallel them all together. The reason we want to do that is if one of the series strings got shaded, either with a tree shading it or maybe a bird turd dropped on it or something like that, it's actually now a dissimilar module in series and the other series strings could backfeed that series string okay, and potentially damage the circuitry in those modules. right? So that's, that's where we would have the series fusing protection. You can also see a very handy spot to install our lightning arrestor, right? Or our surge arrestor. So this is a little uh, silicon oxide can of sand, basically. And um, it'll it's, fuse. it's a surge arrestor. Yeah, it'll fuse, but it'll, it'll expand, it may blow up. So that's why we try and keep it out of the enclosure so it doesn't make a mess inside there. Um, and that would, so if there was a lightning hit, Hopefully it would, it would be absorbed either through our ground rod here or in our, in our lightning arrestor and not get to our sensitive electronical equipment like our charge controller or our inverter. And, 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 and so if, if, we're, if we're paralleling just two strings and they're identical, then we don't have to worry about series fusing because they're identical. One can backfeed the other and, and there's no issue there. And that's code compliant. So but anytime we introduce the third or more string, now we have the possibility two can gang up on one and we have to have the series fusing protection. So that's maybe why you didn't see it on some of those schematics. We only had one or two strings. Yeah. So are they like uh, breakers or like diodes or what? Great question. They could be breakers or they could be fuses. Okay, and if we use fuses, we want to use what's called touch safe fuse holders, which would mean that um, the fuse holder, actually you can't see the fuse and you tip the fuse holder open and then you can pull the fuse out. When you tip the fuse holder open, it actually pulls the fuse out of the circuit and you're not touching a live fuse. That's required by code. We're not allowed to have hot fuses in an installation, right, where someone can just come up and go to replace that fuse and actually, oh, it's in the circuit and they get shocked, right? Um, so we want to use, if we're using fuses, we'll use touch safe. And we might be able to use breakers, but it's going to it's gonna be determined by our voltage, right? Because breakers typically, I haven't seen DC rated breakers that go above 125 volts DC. So on a high voltage grid tie system, we're going to be using fuses because they're rated at a higher DC. What we've got is we've got the array coming down in and it's going through an overcurrent device, a breaker here, right, which is sized to the wire. It's protecting the wire, okay? We've used maybe number 10 or number 12 wire to come down here, and so we have to size the breaker corresponding to that so that if there, for some reason there, there's an overcurrent uh, situation, we protect that wire from being overcurrent and we trip the breaker, right? So this breaker goes from array to charge controller, okay? Then we go out of the charge controller through another breaker to the battery bank, okay? So there's actually two breakers there. One to go from the circuit from the array to the charge controller. That's one wiring circuit, and we need to protect that wiring with overcurrent protection. Are these doubling as your disconnects? And, and breakers also double as disconnects. Great point. If we used fuses, they would not double as disconnects, and we would have to install a separate switch or something like that. That's the, the handy thing about using breakers. It can be our overcurrent and disconnecting means all in one. Very good point.